We have another absolute banger of college football in week eight, highlighting one of the hometown teams, the Georgia Bulldogs, and Georgia Tech takes on Notre Dame. So, yeah, that's a huge game, too. We're not going to leave you out this week, but we do have to highlight the top five matchup, another top five matchup. We get one every week. It's just, it's, awesome. it's absolutely beautiful. Also, if you didn't hear it, and maybe we could do a whole segment on this, they're talking about a little Big Ten SEC kind of college basketball crossover where you play, you know, top team like Georgia will play Ohio State every year, Alabama will play Oregon or something like that. I mean, God, just college football and I, I always thought that was a case when they went to these super Bowl conferences that might happen i mean college football is getting better by the day and, and, and I, you can't tell me otherwise i don't care that there's no dominant team i don't need to see dominance i like chaos and what we've me seen too. this year is chaos but will the chaos continue another number one team texas rain goes back to number two after alabama's big win now they're back to number one they kill oklahoma they've dominated everyone in their path but they have a team with an actual pulse walking yeah. into and when i say pulse i'm talking about an offensive pulse a team that can throw the ball and carson beck while georgia has had their struggles this passing game has actually looked very very impressive over the last several weeks mississippi state alabama particularly that second half against alabama can they do the same thing against Texas, which we haven't seen. Texas defense has been dominant. Their offensive line's been dominant. They've they bullied everyone they played. Yeah. They have bullied everyone they played. Georgia hasn't been bullied. And I mean, they got bullied in the first half of Alabama, but they haven't been bullied for four quarters in what five, six, seven years. I mean, they yeah. haven't been bullied. I'm very intrigued by this matchup for that reason alone. Yeah, I, I, I am all over the dogs. I'm all over the home team. Uh, our home team, they're traveling to Austin. Um, I just think this sets up perfectly. And this is exactly where Kirby Smart probably wants his team. Hungry, doubted, going into a hostile environment where everybody is kissing Sarkeesian's butt, Texas's butt, saying Texas is back, Texas this, Texas that. They beat Michigan. They beat Oklahoma, yada, yada, yada. I am not impressed with Texas in se several specific aspects. Their defense, which has been allotted as this great defense, has played virtually nobody. And if you want to look back at their big games, Michigan can't throw the forward pass if we have done them. I mean, they're playing 1939 football right now. And Oklahoma is Might got to be even worse. Brent Venables, you know, I think did the noble thing and sat his five-star after a, just a, an inexcusable performance against Tennessee, uh, you know, throwing his helmet, yelling at teammates. You can't do that. Uh, he didn't get benched because of a bad performance. He got benched because of a bad attitude. The freshman behind him clearly – Moment was too big, pissed down his leg. Obviously, he wasn't ready for that. I, I think Oklahoma's offense and Michigan's offense is absolutely pathetic well, to say. Especially when Oklahoma was missing pretty much their entire receiving. Game. Yes, like yes, they, not too. only did they not only did they have a true freshman quarterback out there, though. I think I believe it was the first time a true freshman's ever started in that rivalry. They also had no wide receivers. Like he, he had literally like his fourth and fifth and sixth string wide receivers. I mean, they, they didn't have an offensive prayer to score against Texas. Suffice to say, this is the first real test Texas's defense has faced. Now on the flip side of things, Georgia's defense, you talked about Georgia's offense. The passing game is starting to find its foot in Carson Beck against Mississippi state. Uh, obviously Mississippi state's offense made Georgia's defense look a little pathetic, but on the flip side of things, Georgia's offense is starting to put it together. What we thought they could do Carson Beck, you know, coming in as the Heisman, favorite or one of the Heisman favorites you know a lot of people thought he'd be in the conversation for the number one overall pick through the first few games we go this guy sucks now he's starting to put it together Bobo's starting to figure it out a little bit maybe getting a little creative maybe saving some of those plays for this game in Texas I don't know what I think is going to be the story of the afternoon is Quinn Ewers falling into this Bulldogs defense he is not ready for this moment you 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 like to the Will Howard you know Will Howard's going to cost Ohio State in big games. I am waiting for it to happen to Quinn Ewers. You watch that Oklahoma game. Like you said, Texas's offensive line bullied Oklahoma. And when receivers were open, weren't running wide open, it was Sarkeesian's play calling or maybe the athletes on the outside. Quinn Ewers missed open passes, easy passes, easy reads, take took bad sacks against the you know, frankly, it's an average Oak. I don't want to say it's a bad Oklahoma defense. This is an average Oklahoma defense. And this Georgia defense has not lived up to its potential. I cannot wait to see Quinn Ewers into the teeth of this Georgia defense. I, I am fully expecting Quinn Ewers to struggle on Saturday, and I expect Georgia to come out of Austin victorious, more chaos in college football.
Yeah, I mean, I, I think this comes down. Or there's one thing that you have to take in mind in, about the Georgia Bulldogs teams walking into Texas. This is not a healthy Georgia Bulldogs team. This is a very, very battered and beaten on both sides of the ball, down several running backs, down several linebackers, down to their third string center. So it's not the same Georgia Bulldogs team that we saw coming into the season. But at the same time, this is a team that has depth on depth on depth, has the most depth of any team. They've been they've recruited better than any team. They have athletes. They have guys to match up. And what I really think it's going to come down to is very simple. We talk about it in a lot of these big games, especially when we're talking about the NFL, but it's going to come down to the trenches, right? Like if Texas is able to establish the, the run like they were against Michigan and mm -hmm. like they were against Oklahoma and dominate their offensive line, which is probably the best in the country, yeah. dominate Georgia up front, which we do not see very often, then I think Texas has a very, very, very good chance of winning this game. I do think Georgia will be able to put up points, but if Texas can run the ball as well as they have all season long, they're going to be a tough team to beat. It doesn't matter who you are. Whoever yeah. wants to beat Texas has to force Quinn Ewers to make plays. Georgia, the defense that we thought coming into the season, is exactly that type of team. Will they be that type of team on Saturday? I think that's going to be what determines this game. Can they live up to the potential we thought? What we've seen from Georgia defense is time and time again suffocating that rushing attack, and they're not going to completely stop it, but they've got to make Quinn Ewers beat them, force them into third and longs, and I think they're going to have a lot of success. And the other thing they have to do, that's secondary. I'm looking at you, Malachi Starks, yep. first-round pick. you got to stop getting beat one-on-one. -on -one. They're going to put you in man coverage. This is what this Georgia team does. They're relying on you to win those one-on-ones. You're giving up too many big plays down the field. You have got to play your best game against this Texas team. If that happens, I think Georgia's going to have no problem winning this game. I think they're going to put up points. I still yeah. think that Texas secondary is suspect. We haven't seen it tested. I think they get tested this week. But Georgia's defense has to be the pillar of this team if they want to win a national championship, if they want to win this football game. Yeah, it's been the front seven uh, in the cornerback room, I think, that's been the Georgia defense's problem thus far. I, I think that, you know, you, you mentioned it, that if Texas can dominate them up front, it's going to be a really long day. Uh, and, and it doesn't matter how many points you score, uh, Carson, back in Georgia's offense, because when, you're get, when, when your defense is on the field that often, generally speaking, you lose those football games. You really don't ever win those games. Uh, and especially against a team like like Texas, where if they have the ball uh, with, you know, a lead two minutes, they're going to win that football game. Kirk Cousins said it, you know, relating it back to the Falcons that, you know, uh, you know, you, you pass to score points, you run the football to win the game. And that's a simple fact that if you, just like you said, if Texas can run all over Georgia, it's going to be a very long day for the Georgia Bulldogs. I just have faith and, and Kirby smart to get his football team ready for a game that this is mo this monumental. Everybody is doubting Georgia Bulldogs, especially after what Mississippi State, who is a terrible football team, scored at will on this Glenn Schumann. You know, everybody was praising Glenn Schumann in this Georgia defense. No, no, no. It's time to wake up. You're not as good as you think you are. This is the moment to prove that you are as good as you that everybody thought you were going to be. I, I think it's the perfect opportunity for Kirby Smart and this Georgia defense to go in, shock the world, as we've seen time and time again this college football season. It, it, you know, Murphy's law. If it can go wrong, it will go wrong. Just give it a little push. Gravity will take care of the rest. I, I think Quinn Ewers is primed to piss down his leg in a game like this. Yeah, and I think it, it helps because Texas is going to do what I think Georgia loves you to do, and that's they're going to try to punch you in the mouth. And, and nobody punches harder back in the mouth than the Georgia Bulldogs. We saw it <laughs> seven and a half. We saw we, we saw it years and years and years playing Michigan. If you want to run the ball straight up and you don't have a quarterback that can pull that thing down, it is very difficult to just go straight in, yes. man on man, and beat the Georgia Bulldogs defense. We haven't really seen that done. Even Mississippi State, that's not what they're doing. They mm -hmm. make a big plays in the past game. They had a mobile quarterback I think if they just try to if they line up and just try to beat Georgia I think they're gonna have a long day I'm, I'm with you on that aspect of the game